Welcome to Unit 8 of International Taxation. In this unit, we will look at another aspect of how the United States taxes U.S. persons, an exclusion from taxation for certain income earned by U.S. citizens and residents living or working outside the United States. This topic is, of course, important to the U.S. citizen or resident personally. It can also be important for a foreign company hiring a U.S. citizen or resident to work overseas. Because the income is not being taxed in the United States, the tax savings can sometimes become a consideration in salary negotiations between the U.S. individual and the foreign employer. We've mentioned several times during the course that the United States uses a worldwide taxation system in taxing U.S. citizens, residents, and corporations. Under that system, all income is subject to U.S. income tax, regardless of the location where it is earned. As you learned in the reading materials, the United States allows U.S. citizens and residents an exclusion for certain income earned while working outside the United States. The exclusion is commonly known as the foreign income exclusion. The foreign income exclusion allows a qualified individual to exclude from gross income a fixed amount of foreign earned income in calculating the taxpayer's U.S. income tax liability. The exclusion amount is indexed for inflation, so the amount increases over time. The exclusion amount for 2014 was $99,200. When the foreign income is taxed in the foreign country where it is earned, the foreign income exclusion is a substitute for the foreign tax credit. Unlike the foreign tax credit, however, there is no requirement that income be taxed in the foreign country in order for the foreign income tax exclusion to apply. To determine whether a particular U.S. taxpayer is eligible for the foreign income exclusion, two issues must be examined in greater detail. First, we will need to determine whether a taxpayer is a qualified individual for purposes of the exclusion. Second, we will need to determine what constitutes foreign earned income that qualifies for the exclusion. We will look at each of these issues in turn. To be a qualified individual eligible for the exclusion, the U.S. citizen or resident must have a tax home in a foreign country and must either be a bona fide resident of the foreign country for an uninterrupted period that includes an entire tax year, or be present in the foreign country for at least 330 full days during a 12-month period. We saw the concept of a tax home in an earlier unit, and the same type of analysis applies here. The taxpayer's tax home is considered to be the location where the taxpayer's regular or principal place of business is located. If, because of the nature of the business, the taxpayer does not have a principal or regular place of business, his tax home is his regular place of abode, meaning the place where he regularly lives. Determining residence is more complicated. Residence is based on all the facts and circumstances involved in a particular case, taking into account a long list of factors to be considered. Some of the factors include the intention of the taxpayer, the extent to which the taxpayer is integrated socially and culturally in the foreign country, the nature and duration of the taxpayer's employment, and the taxpayer's marital status and residence of his family. As suggested in the reading materials, the issue of a taxpayer's residence has been the subject of significant litigation between taxpayers and the U.S. taxing authorities over the years. To better understand how these issues apply in the context of a real case, let's look at a case that is frequently discussed in this area, Jones v. Commissioner, decided by the United States Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals in 1991. The case involved a pilot for a Japanese airline who was assigned to fly out of Tokyo, Japan. The pilot's wife remained at their family home in Alaska to pursue her career and the pilot lived in a hotel while in Japan. In looking at the factors for determining residence, the court noted that the pilot never learned to speak Japanese and was not heavily involved with social and cultural activities in Japan. On the other hand, his travel back to Alaska to see his family was limited, and when he did travel, it was at his own cost. 
He also did not leave Japan except when he traveled for business or when he was on limited vacations. His reasons for being in Japan, his employment, required him to be there for eight years. While it was true that he lived in a hotel in Japan, his choice to live in a hotel rather than to rent an apartment was based on the high cost of rental housing in Japan. The court also noted that the pilot's employer treated him as a Japanese resident and that he paid taxes in Japan as a Japanese resident, suggesting that under the last of the residence factors, the lack of a tax avoidance motive worked in favor of viewing him as a resident of Japan. Based on all of these factors, the court concluded that the pilot was a bona fide resident of Japan and that his abode for tax purposes was also in Japan. The case provides a good example of how dependent the tax home and residence issues are on the specific facts in each case. The second issue is whether a taxpayer's income earned in the foreign country constitutes foreign earned income that qualifies for the exclusion. Foreign earned income is income attributable to services the taxpayer performs in the foreign country. If, for example, a law professor from the United States moved to a foreign country and taught at a foreign law school for several years, the professor's compensation paid directly for his services would clearly be considered foreign earned income. Where the taxpayer's trade or business involves both the taxpayer's services and the taxpayer's capital investment, as significant factors in producing the income, however, the determination of the amount of foreign earned income eligible for the exclusion is more difficult. Consider the following example. A famous chef from the United States moves to Madrid, Spain to open a restaurant. Her net income from the restaurant for the first year is $200,000. When you consider how that income was produced, you can see that it is based on both the chef's personal services, as well as her capital investment in the restaurant, in the forms of stoves, ovens, and furnishings necessary for the restaurant's operations. Because making a determination of the precise portion of the income that is attributable to services would be very difficult, the U.S. tax regulations allow a portion of the income, up to a maximum of 30 percent, to be treated as compensation for services. Thus, in this example, a maximum of $60,000 of the $200,000 of the restaurant's income would be attributable to the chef's personal services and would be foreign earned income subject to the exclusion. In addition to the exclusion of foreign earned income, you also learned in the reading materials that under United States tax law, a qualified individual may also exclude from gross income an amount equal to a portion of their housing costs while living in the foreign country under the foreign housing exclusion. Costs that may be excluded include expenses such as rent, utilities, and insurance. The exclusion for housing expenses is subject to two important limitations. First, the taxpayer's housing expenses that qualify for exclusion are limited to the portion of the expenses above a base amount. The base amount is 16% of the foreign income exclusion amount. For 2014, that base amount was $15,872. Second, the taxpayer's exclusion for housing expenses may not exceed 30% of the foreign income exclusion amount. For 2014, the second limit was $29,760. To see how these limitations apply, consider the following examples. In the first example, a U.S. citizen moves to Seoul, South Korea at the beginning of 2014 and lives and works there for the entire year. His housing costs in South Korea for the year are $30,000. Under the first limitation, the taxpayer's eligible housing costs are those costs that exceed the base housing amount of $15,872. Therefore, the eligible housing costs are $14,128. We then have to consider the second 30% limitation of $29,760. Since the taxpayer's eligible housing cost of 
$128, or less than the limit of $29,760, the entire $14,128 may be excluded from the taxpayer's gross income. In the second example, a U.S. citizen moves to Tokyo, Japan. Housing costs in Tokyo are higher than in Seoul, so the taxpayer's housing costs for the year in Japan are $60,000. As in the first example, the taxpayer's eligible housing costs would be those costs that exceed the base housing amount of $15,872. Therefore, in this case, the eligible housing costs are $44,128. When we look at the 30% limitation in this example, we see the taxpayer's eligible housing costs of $44,128 exceed the 30% limitation amount of $29,760. Therefore, the taxpayer's foreign housing exclusion is limited to the $29,760 limitation amount. This concludes our discussion of the foreign income exclusion and the related foreign housing exclusion. As you can see, these exclusions are important factors in determining how U.S. citizens and residents working abroad are taxed. So far in the course, we have been focusing our attention on how the United States taxes international transactions. In order to understand how other countries approach international transactions, in our next unit, we will take a brief look at the income tax systems of several countries other than the United States. I look forward to speaking with you then.